If you're wondering whether or not you should update to the latest NVIDIA driver 546.17, then this video is for you. Because in today's video, that's exactly what I'll be comparing. 546.01 versus 546.17. So sit down, strap in, let's go. Alright guys, in today's video, as mentioned in the intro, I'll be comparing the previous driver 546.01 versus driver that came out yesterday, 546.17. But before we get to my results, guys, if you are subscribed to the channel, please just make certain you have notifications set to all. And then while you're at it, like the video, comment in the video, share the video, really will help me with the algorithm. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so by the end of the video. Um, and then, guys, I have added a new section to my homepage. It's all the NVIDIA control panel individual settings and how I get to my best settings. And then every time there's a new driver, I will update this best NVIDIA driver where I compare five of the most recent drivers and ascertain which is the best one. And then for those of you with a 10 gen or newer CPU, uh, full CPU optimization guide over here will show you how to unlock undervolting so you can reduce temperatures on your laptop. So guys, you're not here for that. Um, I will include a link in my description of the video to the game ready driver forum where it's just basically it gives you open issues resolved issues and then also feedback from from users on the latest driver the reason i'm uh, drawing your attention here is because there is an open issue on geforce 10 series and rtx 20 series where ho windows hardware accelerated gpu scheduling is causing conflicts so you might experience freezing or actually blue screens of death so the way that you mitigate that is going into Windows settings, go to gaming, go to game mode, graphic settings, make sure that hardware accelerator GPU scheduling is on you. And this is the only place where you should be using hardware acceleration because it's gonna cause conflicts otherwise. So you go into your browser, go to settings, go to advanced. Uh, on Chrome, this looks a little bit different to Chrome, but the same concept applies. Switch off hardware acceleration in your browser. Do the same thing in Steam, do the same thing in Discord, and do the same thing in VLC if you use VLC. But, let's get to those results, guys. So, um, all my games are tested at medium settings with the exception of the newer games. I do test on GTX 1650 laptop. So, the newer games are all play on low. Uh, all the games are single player because um, I just find the single player data is a lot more tangible and uh, reliable and then lastly i do use fsr 2.0 or 2.1 set to quality and guys i do test on gtx 1650 laptop if you got an rtx 3060 and up your results might vary from mine but generally 3060 and below uh your results should be quite similar to mine in terms of trends but guys um the previous driver 546.01 i was a big fan of that driver once you switched off uh, CUDA sysmen fallback policy, uh, uh, once you set that setting to prefer off in the NVIDIA control panel, 546.01 was a fantastic driver and I was recommending it. But after Windows update, this, uh, this driver actually lost a little bit of performance yesterday. So we're, once I added up all the average FPS over those 14 games, I got to 888. Once I added up all the 1% lows over those 14 games, I got to 668. And then once I added up all the 0.1% lows, I got to 563. So a pretty solid result. I was a big fan of 546.01. As mentioned, I updated my Windows completely yesterday and I actually did notice that with the Windows updates, 546.01 lost a little bit of performance. But funny enough, just after updating Windows, 546.01 after uh, 546.17 dropped so this is actually a driver i recommend at the moment uh, because that performance i lost yesterday after windows update on this driver i gained back with 546.17 so over those 14 games when i added up all of my average fps i got to 894 once i added up all my one percent lows i got to 676 and once I added up all the 0.1% lows, I got for 564. So if I compare it to the previous driver, which was my recommended driver, uh, you got higher average FPS on the newest driver, you got higher 1% lows on the newest driver, 
and then the 0.1% lows are pretty much the same as the previous driver. And that is why I recommend 546.17. It's a good driver. Uh, you, can't go wrong, you can't go wrong by updating to this driver. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And guys, if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now is the time to do so. It's Wednesday, it's the middle of the week. It's almost time for the weekend. Have a good one. It's people like you. Cheers.